Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Zaggertastic episode. It is me, your friend, the one, the only Z, a single gut erd, Zaggert, and I hope you're all having a wonderful morning, noon, night, evening, whatever time it is for you today. Welcome back to the Dragon's Den, and we are going to be talking about the final episode of Avatar The Last Airbender by Netflix. And this was an episode. So it immediately starts with the scene with Aang on Appa coming down to attack the Fire Nation ship. And this time they have him going on there and Katara because he hasn't learned to water bend, so he can't fight a ship all by himself yet. I mean, I guess he could, but it, you know, they want to give Katara the moment. And they also give Sokka a moment of while they're fighting, he's like, You guys keep doing this. I got something I got to do. And he goes in the control room. And immediately my first thought is, You guys are terrible at battle strategy if the moment someone gets on your ship just two people you just abandon the main control room like they just straight up abandon it and he's just allowed to go bang 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 and then not even jump out the window it's, and this is actually a cool image scene i like after they do that i'm like i'm like okay okay i guess you know what some fire nation soldiers are idiots we do see that and as they're getting away oppa's comes flying by the side and sokka and Kat or not sokka ang and katara do a little uh, bending jump to get on him, and then as he's flying by the top tower, you see it explodes, and you see Sokka like flying out, and he barely catches on, and then they fly away. I really like that. That was cute. Uh, it shows the two of them benders, like great benders, and then Sokka, who he's not a great bender, but he knows how to escape with his life. Then they're like, okay, how many more we got? A bunch, like over a hundred, over like two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, like just a bunch. Too many to count. Too many to even see on the horizon. And they get back and they're like, yeah, there's too many there. You're not going to be able to water bend them in the ocean and stop all of them. You're going to have to just defend here. And they're like, okay, we'll defend here. Uh, talking to Paku and the leader of the, the northern chief. I'm forgetting his name. Not Hakoda. That's um, the leader of the south, southern tribe of Wolf Cove. By the way, I just mentioned that they named, they actually gave a name to where they were. It was Wolf Cove because we learned later that there's actually a bunch of different little uh, tribes in the south but that's besides the point by the way i remember the name fine they called it agni kella now if they called it in the original books that fine i just remember them always calling it just the north and i'm kind of again i'm glad they gave this big city this sprawling metropolis sort of thing a name it would be weird if it was just always called the northern tribe and i know that they're just one united tribe there unlike in the south where it was a bunch of little tribes Still, I, I like that they gave it a name. This time they changed the way everything kind of goes down a little bit. Not completely. We'll, we'll get to it uh, step by step as quickly as I can. But the fight starts and Paku's like, we got to get waterbenders to stop those uh, attacks. And Katara comes in and she's like, I've got to stop them. You got to let me help. And he's like, we've talked about this. This isn't the time. No, this is the time. Let us defend your, our home. Us. And it shows all the female waterbenders who have only been learning healing. And even that one, Yagoda, was like, don't let your pride take over now. Come on, let us help. And he's like, the eastern side could use some defenses. And you, Katara, go uh, go be in charge. You'll, you'll know what to do. And she's like helping them out. And then two of the younger guys that uh, they showed get all, oh my god, you're so good at this, show up. And they're like, hey, so uh, Master Paku told us to come talk to you if we need to do anything. He's like, he, he said to talk to me. Yes, I know we're, we're not fully trained, but we'll try our best. Um, okay, go help them up. If you've seen attack coming, don't attack it head on. Come to me and we'll work on a plan together. And he goes, yes, thank you, Master. And she's like, but I'm not a... And they already ran away, which, you know, a little... I don't feel like she was a master yet because Paku still hasn't trained her at all. I feel like she would need him to fully train her to fully be a master, but... I guess they're just streamlining that. I, I, it's fine. You know, guitar, uh, guitar. Claire, my partner, was uh, worrying about, like, oh, they're not giving Katara enough screen time. They're not really focusing on her. And now they're, they're giving her more of a story. Like, she is a master and she's in charge of some people. So Claire was happy about that. I felt a little weird about that because I feel like, again, the only way to truly become a master is, one, training, two, dedication, and three, a teacher. Like, you can be self-taught and be a master, but I feel like she hasn't had enough time to be self-taught to be a master, if you know what I mean. I liked it better in the original cartoon where they say she spends at least a few weeks, maybe, or maybe even only two weeks, training with Paku, and that's when she is either right below master level or right at master level. And she decides to continue training, but she's at a decent enough area where she can train Aang and learn the master techniques, if you know what I mean. And so that, um... 
her just being a master now is like, eh, okay, well, we'll move on. No need to dwell on it. And then, you know, we see the attack happening and we see Zuko and Iroh talking. They have that conversation where he's like, I, I'm going to... I'll try, I'm trying to learn his plans. You got to find a way in. And right before they leave, they actually give Zuko this extra line that I think was really nice, where he's like, Blue Ten would have been proud to be your son, uncle. Like, that was a really, I, I like that. I like, I, I, Zuko wasn't really there yet in the cartoon, but this Zuko, this live action version, I would say is there. And that's fine. I like that. I think it's sweet. I think it just adds more positive moments between Zuko and Iroh. And it's going to make his eventual betrayal of Iroh in season two hurt even more in my personal opinion that's how i see this then we get to Sokka, and he's helping fight off some attacks and there's like an uh, um an explosion that happens and this kid is about to get hit and momo jumps in the way i am surprised they did this where they almost killed momo like i didn't think momo or appa would get hurt at all momo almost freaking gets just killed like i was like it's like they don't have the balls to actually kill him because that would piss off a lot of people but the fact that they even tried to do it i'm like damn okay I, I, I'm okay with that. And then, you know, they bring him to the spirit waters and Yue heals him. And while that's going on, Iroh's talking to Zhao and Zhao's like, we will infiltrate into their sacred barrier. How can you do that with one ship? One ship, but not one vessel. And then he has the airship and then they have the prototype airship and he's like, this is, we, we made these? Well, no, not us. We got it thanks to our uh, spies in Omashu. But still, it'll be a useful item for the Fire Nation and our eventual conquests of the world. And they're going over, and it turns out he has this knife in that waterbending box we saw him have earlier. I thought it would just be a scroll that talked about the spirit, moon spirits or whatever. But then we learn it's actually Kuruk's knife that was made out of spirit materials that is used for hurting spirits. And when we know what he's going to do with that, he's going to kill the moon spirit. And, he, and Iroh's like, are you going to kill the water and moon spirits? He's like, no! The water spirit gives water benders their life. That would be killing millions of men, women, and children. I'm not a monster. But the moon spirit, I can kill her and get rid of all of water bending. And I'm like, I kind of like that. Like, he's like still willing to do something really fucked up and dark, but not like that fuck. He's like, I'm not evil. I'm just doing what's right, you know, because he truly believes he's in the right. So then we get to the spirit uh, temple with the statue of Kuruk that Aang was talking to him before. That's where Zuko and Katara fight. We saw that in the trailer if you were paying attention. That's where we have the showdown where he goes, you little peasant, you found a master, haven't you? I I've always liked that scene. Unfortunately, they got rid of the scene where he goes, your power rises with the moon. My power rises with the sun. Because they say, they added this new thing that I'm like, I get why they do it. It makes it sound more mystical and magical, but I... I don't think it was necessary. I think it just adds, it adds a pointless kind of drama to the show or just like an extra step that the characters have to take where it's like, that isn't just any moon. That is the ice moon. And only when the ice moon shows up, that's once a year, the spirits of the moon and ocean, that's when they appear and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I don't think they needed that. I think they could have just, I, I prefer the where they thing where they decide to completely leave the spirit world and become mortal. I preferred that, but this is what they wanted to do. It's a change. Uh, I'll roll with the punches, as they say. And of course, Sokka and Yue noticed them kind of come in with the airship because they were there healing Momo. And that's when Zhao was like, help me to identify the spirit, which makes sense. He wouldn't know what the spirit just looks like in this version. In the original version, he saw a scroll that showed him what the spirits looked like. But in this version, he wouldn't know. And so he has to figure it out. And he's like, Iroh, you know about spirits. You might know what they look like. He's like, fine, I'll help you. Uh, and he's like, I'm not going to help you look. And Zhao's like, it's either you help me look or I burn the whole place down. He's like, well, if it's between that, then I will help you. And they find it. And that's when he threatens to kill it. And we get the famous line of, if you would harm that spirit, I'll do whatever you do to it a hundredfold. And he goes to, uh, in this version, instead of burning it in the water, he actually does stab it with the knife. Although he does trip and drop it, and then we get the whole losing of the moon, and Aang goes into the spirit water form, and I'm glad they did the spirit water monster. I, well, it visually looked impressive in the, the movie that shall not be named. Uh, just the giant wave, I was like, really? That's it? I'm not a fan. I like the giant water monster, and I think it looks good. I think it looks good, and they add a whole thing where it's like, not just for this one night will the Avatar be taken over by the Spirit, but until the Moon Spirit comes back, the Avatar will be lost forever, and the Moon Spirit, the Ocean Spirit, will be taking over his body and using its power. 
to roam the earth forever looking for his partner, causing chaos and destruction along the way. And I'm like, damn, I think that may, adds a really cool layer to it that I don't think they mentioned the original cartoon. I think that makes it like way darker. And it's very Godzilla-esque. He kind of looks like a water Godzilla, like a weaker water Godzilla, but like a fucking, it's still fucking cool. And then we get the whole showdown with Zhao and Zuko. And they had it a thing where like Zhao's like, yeah, your father's just playing games with him. He's just messing with your head. He would have never let you back in. And that's maybe just what Zhao believes because he's hearing it from Azula because in this version of Azula and Zhao are talking. And instead of having Zuko beat him, he gets all like, no, that can't be. It can't be the truth. Like uh, Luke Skywalker. And then Iroh just blasts him. Like he just fucking murks him right there and he falls in the water. And I was like, damn, he just burned him alive. That's dark. I like it. Um, I think I prefer the original one where you're like the spirit monster just takes him and he just gets pulled into the ocean. You never see him again. I think that was even darker. Uh, but this one is, this one's pretty dark. If I, you know, if you can't watch cartoons and you can watch only live action because cartoons and animation for some reason doesn't click, click with your brain. I want to know if you like that scene. I'm just zooming through it, by the way, because I'm going to talk about what I thought of the show as a whole by the end of this. Also, my cat outside keeps going, meow, 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 meow. She wants treats, but she's not supposed to have treats. Anyways, back to the show. So we actually get a little bit more of Qatar being like, Aang, you have to come back. I need you. We're a family. You can't just abandon us and we of course get the scene of ua uh sacrificing herself but we actually get a few other people sacrifice themselves like there's that one guy she was supposed to uh be engaged to in this version uh the chief of the north gets injured and he's like you all back off and he's like no we will hold it back and then he dies i think his name was han right yeah han and han dies in this which was kind of sad i'm like we didn't really know him but i'm like dang that sucks he was just trying to save his people and it was during when they couldn't waterbend. And they, of course, show the scene where, like, when the water monster shows up, all the waterbenders bow down to it. I wish they had done the scene where it shows the waterbenders bow, and then the Fire Nation point their spears at it, and that's and then it attacks the Fire Nation. That would have been cool. Um, I don't think there's really much else for me to discuss. I mean, they do add some stuff at the end, which was interesting. One of the things is, like, Sokka's like, I couldn't save her. I wasn't strong enough. And her dad's like, no. Think about it. She w would have been alone, having to take, make the most horrible, difficult choice she could. And you were there to give her strength. Sometimes it's not about how physically strong you are that makes you a great warrior. And I really like that. I, I really like that. That's, um, it's kind of a, it's a nice sentiment for Sokka in that moment. And we get uh, Katara talking to Paku and he gives her the, the spirit water, you know, which we'll know when we're going to use that. Wink. And she says he's a she's and then Paku calls her a master and it's like you got to train the avatar, which yeah, she, he does invite her to stay because it's like we would we could use more of your training here to help fight off the firebenders, but you know they got to train the avatar, and that's more or less where the show ends. And it, it you know I will say overall I think it was good. I had some issues. I don't like the fact that Aang never water bends throughout the entire season. I wanted him to water bend at least once. I don't know why they got rid of that. It kind of bugs me. There were some other things in the show that I that were changes that I, I don't know how I feel about. It. I'd have to think about them more. Overall, I had fun though. I think this was fun. Is it better than the original? No, it was never going to be. I keep saying that. This was always going to be its own thing, an adaptation. And I think for what it was, this was a good adaptation. Not the best adaptation, I think there probably could have been a better one, but for what we got, I'm really happy with it. It has its issues, but it also has some strengths that I think would have made the original show even better if they had some of these in, but they didn't. And I still think the original show is way better. It is fantastic. It is great. This does not make me mad like some other adaptations have made me mad. And that's because it doesn't feel like it's trying to be better. Or trying to say our version is the best or anything. It just feels like it is trying to be a version that they created. And it just, it feels fun. And it still feels more or less like these characters and this world. And the story of Avatar The Last Airbender. It doesn't feel like it's changing any major character beats to make a character worse. Or to make another character better. Or anything like that. And that's all that matters to me. And again, I still have the original. If I want to watch the original, I'm going to watch the original. In fact, watching this made me want to watch the original again. I want to do another rewatch. My like 50 bajillionth rewatch of the show. And that's only a good thing. So I'm very happy with this. I, it's again, not perfect. It has a, quite a few flaws, but I'm glad we got this version. I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm excited for season two. I hope we get a season two. Oh, they do have one more small scene at the end that I thought was really cool where it shows 
uh, Ozai talking to one of the fire sages. They're, they're like, you know, we failed the Siege of the North. That's fine. It was never really our true objective. Our true objective was to get Omashu. Finally, there is only one ta city that stands between us and conquering all of the Earth Kingdom. And it shows the person who led the assault on Omashu was Azula. And he finally let her go fight in the war outside there. And I like, I, I kind of like that. I like that it showed that he didn't just have this one plan. He, he actually has like multiple plans as a leader should. And it makes everything seem more multifaceted. And it shows that the Avatar cannot save everyone unless he stops the Fire Nation altogether. And there's only one way to do that. And that's by taking the Fire Lord head on. And the only way he'll do that is once he learns all the bending disciplines. And I, I'm, like I said, now I'm excited for season two. Please have Aang waterbend and earthbend in season two. I swear to God, if he spends all of season two learning to waterbend and he doesn't earthbend once, I'm going to have a conniption. I'm just going to, I might just scream. I don't know. It's going to piss me off if that's the case. But one cool thing I did like is that at the end, they have an end credit scene to kind of hype you for season two, where he's like, where they show the, uh, the celestial tower thing. And it's not in Wang Chitong's library. I don't know if we'll even get that in season two. Instead, it's the Fire Lord who has one. It's like, we have been finding new ways to study and predict the movements of the heavens, Fire Lord. And it will be upon us soon. Sozin's Comet. And I actually like the little image they have of like the physical thing where they light the, the comet with fire. And it's like, when is it coming? Soon. And of course they did that because they can't just say, oh, it'll be here by summer's end. For one major reason. In cartoons, in animation, you can say something will be here tomorrow or a year from now or however much time you want. And it won't matter because the characters will always look the same age because they are animated. In live action, people are going to age even if you only take a few months off. Maybe only a year in between. And if they say it has to be by summer's end and the actor who plays Aang, who is currently 14, is like 16, 17, he's going to look a lot different trust me three years is going to make a huge difference and you're going to be like this does not look like a kid who's only six months older this looks like a kid who's like five years older trust me it's gonna he's gonna look different by season two and three so them just giving that soon it makes sense because it's still coming it is still a threat it is still part of the main story it's just not a set deadline and i think that was very smart and they kind of had to do that i'm really happy with this is it the greatest thing no I'm excited to see what all the other YouTubers say. And I'm excited to see what you say. So comment down below. We'll see you all next time. Sorry I haven't been uploading every day. I just, a lot of stuff happened. Just a lot of stuff. If you want to hear my even more full opinions on this, uh, let's get this video to 50 likes by the end of the month. Until then, stay safe, stay smart, stay healthy. Most importantly, be thankful for everything and everyone in your life. And the number one rule here, don't believe in yourself. Believe in me, who believes in you. Bye-bye, friends. Hey, thank you for watching to the end of the video and the end of the series. Uh, I know I'm meant to do it every day and I skipped a few days, it happens. I'm sorry about that, but I'm just glad you're here at all. If you like this series, click that like button. If you want to see more, click that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one and thank you again for joining me through this entire series.